extend a cordial welcome to all our esteemed delegates to the 21st NABS Convocation from Scientific Convention being jointly organized by Guru Angad Dev Veterinary and Animal Sciences University and the National Academy of Veterinary Sciences, India. So we will commence this auspicious day with a keynote address. The chair for the address is Dr. B. N. Tripathi, sir. And the keynote speaker is Dr. Kamlesh Trivedi, advisor, National Dairy Development Board. And his topic is enhancing the productivity of cattle and buffaloes. So I would like to take this opportunity to invite Dr. Trivedi on stage and start with this talk. So friends, today we are going to have 21st NABS Communication from Scientific Communication. And this is a very, very important session that we are going to have it. And that too before us, we have a very learned a production man of India, who is currently advisor to NDDB, is going to speak to you for about 45 minutes. With this stand, let me invite uh, Dr. Dr. Atavedi, who has been a very experienced person in breeding, etc. So he will really tell you all that what, what will happen in this country and the kind of road map that we are going to have it in the future. Thank you very much, audience, for giving me this opportunity along with Professor Pater. Now I will ask uh, our, our speaker to speak Thank you very much. Sustainable growth on dairy sector uh, now. Enhancing productivity of cattle and buffalo has assumed a key or key priority area because if we if we cannot increase productivity, perhaps we are not able to meet the demands in the future and aspiration of farmers. So what I would share with you is what we have done by government of India, state governments, and also. NEDP and what we need to do, what we should do. So I will start with saying that we have done remarkably well in last We are the largest meat producer, all we know we are the largest meat producer in the world. 221, last year's estimate was 221. It is roughly about 24% of world production. And if you look at the last one decade, the growth rate in production is roughly about 5.6% and world average is 2.2%. That means we are growing much faster than the world production. And it, it is estimated that we have touched the 100 million market channel of milk production in the next maybe 10 days, 10, one decade. But this milk is coming from not just cows, also from buffaloes. 45% of contribution is from buffaloes, 32% uh, from exotic and crossbred, and 20% from indigenous and 3% from both. So we'll have to look for all the species for increasing milk production. If you look at the, like the productivity, if you look at the productivity, uh, is not seems very good in compared to the advancing country. If you just an example, if you look at the US figure, it is 10,000 million, 10,000, sorry, 10,869, 10,900 kg per year. Against our, for cow is in 1950. So that means 5.6 times more production the US cows are making than us. But if you compare that figure with the world average, which is 3692. These are a few figures. Uh, we are, our average is 72% of the world averages. Implying that, that it's not that bad if you compare to the world average. And if you look at the growth, the table below, if you look at the growth, then our productivity growth is 2.54 for cows and 2.38% for buffaloes, which is much higher than the world average. Implying that we will soon catch up the world average productivity of, of cows. Of course, buffaloes we are higher than world averages. So, but we should not be complacent about what we have done. Because demand is going to go up because of rising in income of people, 
urbanization, and also slight increase in human populations. Demand is going to go up. And Indians have, Indian like milk, consuming milk. So demand is going to go up and up. And we have to plan for producing that much quantity of milk, which country needs. And now we have all potential to export the milk outside. So we'll have to think about production, what our Indian consumers needs, and bit of export. We have today exporting just about less than 1% of milk. It's just very small for the country of our size. So, and saying that we are world largest milk producers and exporting just 1%. So we can produce more milk and then also export outside the country. So I said that we should not be complacent and to meet the expectations of farmers, we must focus on increasing productivity planning. How do we We have a very large population of ant bovine. 136 million adult female cattle and buffalo together we have. This, like Dr. Tripathi said, we cannot increase this because of various resource constraints and also climate change. So we should not think about increasing this population. Of course, there are indications that population is declining, for instance, uh, indigenous animals and buffaloes. And it's a good trend if it, if it happens. Of course, see the crossbred population increasing in, in, in some 30% increase between two censuses. So, but as I said earlier, we can't increase production by raising our population. We have to increase productivity. So now, how do we do it? So if we have to increase production, uh, sorry, increase productivity now at the same time, production, then we have to build infrastructure and put processes in a place so that we can increase genetic potential of cattle and buffalo, improve availability of feed and fodder, and advising on ration balancing, standard animal health systems, enhancing farmer skill and ma skill for management of animals, collecting adequate data for uh, timely data collections for taking informed decisions making. Adhering to standard, we have to have a regulatory system. We lack a regulatory system for in genetic improvement programs, for cement production. We have, do have some cement production, but nothing regulatory system for an AI delivery system. And we should create a market for our farmers, access to market so that they can get regulatory prices. So, in my opinion, these are the tools that we can use to improve genetic potential of our, sorry, productivity of animals. So I will start with genetics, how to increase genetic potential of cattle and buffaloes. I have a little expertise in this area, so maybe I will focus a little more, I will be more comfortable in this area. Uh, I will spend a little more time on this. And less in the other areas, Tripathi and others. Seeing some is here, we can add the um, health side and nutrition side. Uh, I've done my whole thing in uh, uh, breeding, and of course, uh, a lot of things on the management side of information systems and statistics, mathematics, and um, that areas are my area of work, not in nutrition or health. So if, if you look at the figures, these advanced dairy producing nations have remarkably changed the productivity of their animals over a period of time. For instance, in the United States, the average productivity of their animals was 4,700 kg in 1975. And then in 2023, it has gone to 10,900 kg. <coughs> Such a remarkable change has happened. Well, how they have done it? It is attributed that 60 to 70 percent of this change which has happened is, is change in the genetic improvement of animal. And remaining 30 to 40 percent is improving the environment that the nutrition have management. So 60 to 70 percent of the improvement has happened because of their systematic genetic improvement programs they put into place for a long period of time. Initially they have to put up a project testing program they started somewhere early 70s and continue to do it for a long period of time repeatedly doing the same thing build a large scale performance recording 
uh, infrastructure in the country record a large animal, put a large number of bull in the taste program, produce large number of daughters from each bull, estimate breeding value with a very high accuracy, select top bulls out of that, and use them extensively in the country. That is how they made a progress over a period of time. What can we do? In my opinion, we'll have to build infrastructure. We have done a lot of things I will describe about how we, what we have done so far. But we need to do first build an infrastructure for first thing, what kind of breeding design we adopt. We should, we, we, if we say that we just follow what they have done, a project testing program, can we do it? Do we need to modify? Then we have to put a performance in, in infrastructure for performance recording. How do we do it? What tools we can apply? I will tell you about several tools that we have developed. The automation that we have done for recording of trades in, in the, at the field level. So first thing we have to do, decide about, is what breeding design we follow. Producing program, pedigree selection program, genomics. Then performance recording, what traits we measure. How do we measure those traits? How we estimate breeding values? What are the statistical models that we have to use in to, to estimate breeding value? And select the top bulls. And then these top bulls could be sent to cement stations where we have to modernize our cement production system which we have. And then carry these cement doses to, to the AI delivery system and finally reaches to the farmers. Apart from this core structure for genetic improvement, Thing. We also need to have an adjunct system. One is identification. If you don't put an identification of animals, you can't do any genetic improvement program. Forget about genetic improvement program if you cannot identify animals. Other one is information system. You must know about enough information network for animal productivity and health, which have been now become a national application for anything that we do or go of India support. You have to use enough. So I will a little bit talk about enough is a big system. I was involved in making in 2008 and 10. The whole system was developed uh, uh, with, along with uh, Infosys, uh, the best organization in this country for the software. And we did it that in 2010. We went live in the, and then we are implementing the system. Uh, so far, so many years we have been doing it, improving it upon. So information system is a must. If you don't have information, forget about genetic improvement program. Because it is becoming more and more complex. So we have to have good information system. Luckily, we have a good information system. And regulatory system. We don't have this. We, we have been doing it. We have been developing it. Regulatory system for genetic improvement program, regulatory system for cement production, regulatory system for AI delivery system, regulatory system for even for information systems. We we'll have to have a regulatory system. When I say regulatory system, implying that we have a set standard for each of them, and then we have to ensure physically whether those standards are adhered by the implementing agencies. That is what I mean by regulatory system. It is not just on paper. So this is a framework that we can use it. So in our country, when we are talking about genetic improvement program, we are talking about HF, your HF. HF Crossbred, GRC, GRC Crossbred. We are talking about 39 indigenous breeds. We are talking about non-descript cattle. We have a 13 buffalo breeds. We are non-descript buffaloes. So these are all kinds of animals that we have. So when we are talking about genetic improvement program, we have to talk about what we have to find, what we do in each case. Then only we are talking about genetic improvement about right now 136 million cattle and buffalo that we have. But it's not just a few isolated farms that we develop or improve genetics. We'll have to improve genetics for all of these breeds. So initially when we, uh, now 2010 12 when National Dairy Plan was uh, initiated, we initiated 14 project testing programs for seven breeds now. We have for SF prospect in Gujarat and Kerala, then Jersey Crossbred in Tamil Nadu and Andhra Pradesh, Gear for of course in Saurashtra region, Saiwal in 
Gangalagar has been in Punjab. Jersey, Piyot, now recently started in Himachal Pradesh. Masala Buffalo is in Masala and Banaskata district. And Mura, we have in Punjab, Haryana, Western UP, and of course in Gujarat. So these are the protesting program we started. I did not explain the whole program, but idea is a protesting program. We put a set, set number of 100 days program for each break. We produce we distribute semen closes in the field, villages. In each program we have 150 to 200 villages on the program. We produce daughters from the test doses, and the daughters, when they come in milk production, we measure the quantity of milk, and then the bulls are the breeding values are estimated based on the daughter performance. Top bulls are selected, but in our case, top bulls selected are used for nominated mating, and the young cows born now we do the genomic testing on that. And genomic breeding values are estimated, and select out of the bulls that we, the young bulls we produce, we have a genomic breeding value. Top based on genomic breeding value, we select young male cows which goes to semen production. We apply very high intensity of now. It's possible to do because if you need a one bull, we produce three bull, and three bull, and all of these bull based on the genomic breeding value. Inside that, if you need a hundred bull. We produce 300 bulls and then select 100 bulls out of that. So that is how we do protesting program. Let me just give you the other breeds that we call it pedigree selection program in the sense that in a many of our indigenous breeds we don't have an AI infrastructure. So when we don't have AI infrastructure, we can't uh, put uh, protesting program in place. So we first started in those uh, breeds. We started in building an infrastructure for AI and and then started putting a lot of uh, animals on the recording and then the most recorded animal, very large number of recorded animals, indigenous animals. This is the first time we recorded in the field very large number of animals, <coughs> indigenous breed. And then we produce young male cows using the top semen and then these male cows we send for semen station. We have a nine breeds where uh, we have started pedigree selection program, Rati in Bikanet, Kankari in, of course, in Gujarat, Tarkar in Barmen, in the Sermon area, in Rajasthan, Haryana in Haryana, Kelo in Maharashtra, Nilirami in Punjab, Panjapuri in Maharashtra, Jafabad in Buffalo, Saurashtra, and Panina recently started in Kutch with the Prime Minister's uh, uh, insistence that we must do in Bani also. And that's how we started recently for Bani. Now, let me just give you some. Infra uh, performance recording infrastructure that we have developed and the kinds of instruments that we use in order that our quality of data we collect is very high. We collect all of these traits uh, under this program, whether it is processing program or it is uh, uh, pedigree selection program, production trait, reproduction trait, and type traits. All of the traits, we I'll just give a brief idea, quick idea about how this all are measured. First is about reproduction trait. We have, as I said earlier, we have enough system and every inseminator has a mobile and application, enough application on the mobile. So after the insemination, he just collects the information in the AI date and bull number and check, goes to central server. No paperwork, it goes directly to server. Similarly, with pregnancy diagnosis, that information also put into the mobile and goes in. And at the time of calving, calving date and calving ease, and birth weight of the calf measuring the weight, I mean the measurement is done and the weight is estimated. Based on this information, the computer go on giving you information about all of this state. You are not calculating, computer calculates and go on giving you information about breed wise, area wise, whatever you want to, in the whole application is user friendly, you can produce, even the inseminator, even the farmer can produce this information on his mobile. Next is a milk production measurement. Earlier we used to measure by volumetric, by charts we are measuring. Now we have developed a, a smart weighing machine. It might look a very dirty looking machine below, it's, but it's very smart. A smart weighing machine is, is uh, where you put a, the, the recorder goes to villages with a smart weighing machine. It's a small machine, it's a 3 kg weight. And you put a vessel on top of that machine, the poor milk, put a zero and pour milk, so automatically it measures the quantity of milk produced and the Bluetooth that it gives from that to mobile of the recorder, mobile of the recorder and then from record it goes to the server. 
Now nobody is involved. Now nobody can manipulate. And at the same time, it sent the GPS, the coordinates of the village, and a time. So the, the recorder has to go to the farmer's doorstep, has to put milk in the vessel, and cannot do anything. And the, the uh, available, there are three manufacturers, we are supplying in thousands, not in one to thousands. Every milk recorder in the country now, and now government India has taken a decision that even the small sample survey that we are going, which is happening, now they will measure with this machine, smart weighing machine. See, what has happened because of this? So much of trust has improved on the, on the record side. So much of trust. For example, we recently did and asked some farmers, how do you, uh, what happens earlier and now? The farmers are saying, we trust the record. And what, the other thing they said is, buying and selling of animals has become very smooth. Because when is, a buyer comes, he may not ask what is the reproduction of this animal. He just put in his application, if he has put enough, he puts the year tag number. And all information about that animal comes on his mobile, the buyer. Buyer's information. And buyer also knows that it is measured by the smart weighing machine, not by what wonder with care of adding water or anything. So the point is that this smart machine is revolutionizing our recording system. Trust has increased. And we have we can trust the record now. Farmers are trusting and the policy makers can trust these records now and make decisions. We have a milk component analyzer, almost 65 milk component analyzers put in different places where milk samples are set and we measure fat, protein, lactose and somaticycon, oh sorry, SNF. We have not had put somaticycon. And we also have a distributed system. Sometimes, you know, it is very difficult to get logistic problems. So in that case, we uh, have a distributed uh, small machine we have developed. For every 10 villages, that small machine is put in one village, one house of one village, recorder. And then uh, milk component analysis is done for every 10 village. So that is how uh, milk component analysis and all the type grids we have developed, several instrument, local instrument for typing. What is the cost of that? But very accurate to the hundred graphs, graphs accuracy. So type rate, sorry, type rates also type rates also we have developed several small small instruments for our purposes must be useful in the villages. Uh, so uh, just to give a figures, uh, we have put so, so far 32,000, 32,500 rules under this program and we have done about 58 lakh chest inseminations and some 89 lakh daughters, eight, sorry 8.9, 8, sorry 89,000 daughters uh, under recording and from this uh, data we tested records because this is the monthly recording. So we have tested records for 4.2 lakh uh, tested records from under this system. Similarly, for uh, uh, pedigree selection program, the indigenous breeds, uh, we infrastructure we have uh, done in 5.7 lakh uh, taste insemination, something like in, uh, 30,000 uh, animals completed with recording, and if you put the big records, it is 3.4 lakh <coughs> records of indigenous breeds are available on, on, on the system. These are uh, the, along with this we have now infrastructure for genomic side. Uh, we have developed, I mean we have a genomic lab and also like if I said we have developed a chip. Earlier it was a induced chip developed by NDDP. Then we put together from uh, the ICR system from uh, this Institute of Indian Barcard to be together. Now we have a common chip and then everybody is using that common chip. So when pooling of data would be very easy. And then breeding value estimation, once you have records, then we'll have to do breeding value estimation. Government India, Government India has uh, 
set up a predict value estimation committee uh, with representative from ICR, LEDP, uh, independent persons, there is one foreigner also from Denmark who is in the committee. And incidentally, I am the chairman of that committee. So we estimate, uh, we suggest a model that how reading value could be estimated for different fields and, and the records that we have. And then we use LEDP uh, computing, computing facility to actually do reading value estimation. And now with the genomics, you surprise to know reading value estimation for gen uh, young cows. Because young cows cannot wait. So we have to supply reading value for the young cows to be procured from different parts of the country. So every week we supply a reading value for the new cows. It is maybe unimaginable how do we do it every week of reading value estimation. But that is what we can do right now. We have to cover facility and put three persons continuously engaged on doing that exercise. But we have to supply. If you want to use genomics, you have to pick up a calf at very age. Within one month you have to pick up calf. So we have to supply genomic blood samples should come, we have to do analysis and send this information back and then that's how we have to do very quick on that. So this is general. So we have a standard random regression model incorporating both the traditional and genomic data together. We estimate breeding, genomic breeding values now of all young suck in the uh, So far we have supplied uh, 3,000 young bulls to for semen production to Projection program and another 739 goals on strategy selection program. Total about 2,772 goals we have supplied to the 60 swimming stations. Uh, this uh, 60 swimming stations, what we have supplied about 2,700 goals, is replaced, has replaced 60% of existing goals. That means 60% of the goal today, of the 60 swimming stations are producing those genetics from the goods coming from the program and PS4. So at least some genetic change we can expect to happen with this goods semen growing in the field or AI. So after AI, I mean after producing a best bull, we have to disseminate. So semen production, we have 60 semen stations, uh, bull under collection about 4,870 and producing 123.38 million semen doses. And we are growing by 6.8%. Uh, and as I said earlier, now this, all the semen stations, within very one year time, we will replace 100% bull uh, of all the semen stations in this program. The semen uh, stations are evaluated by the CME uh, every two years. Earlier we started in 89. And the government of I mean, NDP started. We did it for five years uh, continuously annually. Then we MSP was made that time, whatever MSP we were using. Then based on our experience, we modified it. Government India then set up a CME. Now CME is doing biannual evaluation of all the civil species. Uh, the all the genetic improvement program evaluations we do it NDP annually. Uh, this is AI, this figures. Yeah, as a official figure, it is 76 million AI, but I'm I am sure it is not because not reported other figure. I'm sure if I say about 100 million insemination must be happening in the country, more than 100. I'm saying more than 100 because if you look at in the sales figure from semen station, it is 130 million. 130 million semen station are selling semen dosing, and AI we are showing that 100. 76 is a very underestimate. Government of India has talked the annual report. But this is, uh, I am sure it's not right. So we have, Government of India has uh, under RGM, Russia Google Mission, uh, set up a sex hotel laboratory spy in the government system as we, the spy, ADS, and National Union have a sex hotel civil users facility. And uh, this uh, five government stations and So the, this, the, we, this is, these stations are producing about 63 uh, lakh doses. They have produced 63 lakh doses. Government in India and the RGM provided the incentive about 750 rupees per uh, assured pregnancy. So, uh, government in India has also supported an RGM with the IDF and the laboratory 20 in the country. And 
human is high quality. The, the green part of the efficiency estimated 40% uh, because they are saying that in India and the water production is not increasing. So last 25 years is the same. The figure is same. I have been looking at this figure for so many years. This is 8 to 9 million hectares and 5% of crop area is used for water production. It has remained constant. And the water seed which are used is, the, is only 25% of water seeds are used. Otherwise, it is old water that are used for water production. And common lands and uh, commons, uh, these are over exploited, not managed properly. So they are becoming wasteland kinds of things. And common in factories today is just using about 10% of the requirement. So what we need to do is to increase the availability of feed and water. We have to also improve the utilization of what feed and water we have. And then also advising farmer how to balance patients. Uh, if you look at the cattle feed uh, industry, uh, we have a capacity of 7.5 million tons, 3.5 million in corporate sectors and another 4 million in broader sectors. And uh, a very healthy growth at 6% of the whole you know, cattle feed industry is growing. Uh, but there is a requirement as per this about 10% of total requirement. Uh, currently, so that there is huge scope for uh, cattle feed manufacturers to expand the cattle feed production. Uh, and they should also think about not only cattle feed but also start producing calf, start milk, 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 And we should have, now we should think about big plants. We should not have talk about small plants. Some of the, uh, in Gujarat, Kedha District Property Milk Producer Union is, have put up a 2,000 metric ton plant per day. 2,000 ton is produced per day. Earlier, the Banas Union in Gujarat, I put up a plant which is 1800 million tons. This is what you see the picture in the Banas cattle pit plant of 1800 million, uh, sorry, 1800 tons, metric tons per day capacity. And then all kinds of product they are making, calf starter, milk replacer, vegetables, and so So there is a huge scope for expansion of uh, cattle pit. The bypass pudding, it has been said that if you treat the bypass, the degradability reduces from 6 to 70 percent to 25, 30 percent. And so that we can improve the efficiency of uh, protein waste that we have. And uh, it has been observed that uh, getting a 1 kg of bypass feed increases the 1 kg of red uh, feed. And that's what, and we have been uh, providing some bypass plant, bypass feed plant. They put up a 20 bypass plant uh, in the country. Mineral mixture is really not adequate in, in our diet because the food, our, our diet, some of them are deficient in one mineral or other mineral. And, and if you moment you put mineral mixture, my own experience when I was developing this uh, ration balancing uh, software, we're using linear programming, and this is using a unilinear programming. And so if you don't put a mineral mixture, get into trouble. Because it needs a calcium and phosphorus, which often is not available from your present uh, supply. So, moment you put a mineral mixture, it gets a balance ratio. So, mineral mixture is very important. <laughs> and, uh, and if you feed mineral mixture, uh, there is a lot of change will happen. It's required for your production. But you know, one part, some mineral is deficient, in other part, some other mineral is deficient. So, we have to do mapping, and now uh, ICR and NDDP has done mapping at star country. And the mineral mixture formulations are available. We have a models for mineral mixture production. We have set up a uh, 20 plants of mineral mixture across the country and the time is. Water seeds, of course, as I said earlier, that's very limited uh, water area. Uh, last of, this to last of mission is encouraging the value chain of producing breeders seeds, uh, population seeds, certified seeds. We make sure that water seeds are available. And it is also assisting and set up a uh, seed processing plants across the country and supply. Okay. So I will just pick. Uh, just okay. A um, lot of uh, utilization part of silage making has become very popular. You surprise you that the silage is available for retail shops in pack form. In Gujarat, there are shops where you get silage in a pack form like this. The one which you see in the last is in pack form, you can get a silage. Hay is also making. There are shops available now in Hays and uh, this is not available. We are just laboratory pack, so making a pallets from the hay, but it's not available in the market. But Hays are possible to have. We also uh, did an exercise of dry powder converting into dry tea. 
total mix ratio. Savers are there, cut the dry powder after several, then you pick up, make a bale, then you add concentrate to make a total mix ratio of dry powder and concentrate. And this is with tested it and then we have a one plant, deep plant of this. We also the traditional TMR where we put a green powder and I, I believe personally and seen in many countries that uh, instead of a whole cattle feed, now TMR is becoming very popular. What is there is that the, the interpreters have a silos of raw material, silos of raw material, including silage, where they have land that produces silage. And then they farmers come with the requirement that this is what I need and you mix it up and give it to me. And the farmers comes for a weekly basis, they just buy TMR from the units and the select. It has been demonstrated just as a very good concept and we must promote the government of India is promoting this concept that we must uh, promote this idea of TMR in many locations. Uh, we have a recent dynamic applications. You, you can download these applications on your mobile with a little bit of permission uh, and this application we have, it is a uh, farmer goes to farmer doorstep, they, they advise the farmer what to mix of the available resources. It is a linear programming built into the system and it gives a solution. Uh, we did it uh, with a resource person in the villages and the nested in fact some 28 lakh animals were covered under 33,000 villages in 18 states and we found that we did it data that farmers can get benefit of 26 rupees per day of farm. If you instead of just resources, same resources, if you balance it, you can get this. Strength health side, uh, uh, is a, we have a very huge infrastructure, uh, veterinary side, veterinary hospital and clinic, veterinary dispensary, stock points. Uh, one of the observations I have is that, uh, you know, these facilities are, uh, they don't have a diagnostic facilities and often they just treat symptoms symptomatically and is, what happens is that then in that place they use a very high level of antibiotics and other drugs and finally it goes to your milk or uh, meat and then it creates a problem for resistant strains of bacteria and cancer or allergy or reproductive disorder. Another observation I have is the state budget, the recurring budget of veterinary, 80-25% budget is on salary there. So the remaining 60 to 20 percent of budget is goes to purchasing medicine and other things, which which is sometimes you know we so we must promote a private veterinary practice in this country. You know, and the government system should use for diagnosis and and prevention of diseases. And this is other infrastructure which is available for diagnosis. 50 uh, say diagnostic laboratories are available, but the problem is that they have they don't have standardized diagnostic kit. And accreditation is also another issue which. To be handled. Quarantine facility, we have five places and vaccination rate, and we are sufficient. The government of India is implementing uh, FMD control and Brusula control program, uh, and which other is to be added in HSB2 input the process. And there is an act which provides a legal assistance to implement this. Food security, of course, as I said earlier, if you uh, this. The residuals in the, your milk and milk which goes into because of very high use of antibiotics and other things. That should, should be some standards should be there and we implemented those standards. Animal keeping comfortable, that's the key thing we should do also, which is not there in our, in our system. It should be and it should be maintained a part of this. Institution building is just to one is that all institutions should, should commit themselves. To, it is not just doing, uh, sitting and watching it. We must commit ourselves to develop this infrastructure for the development program, for pit port thing, for recent balancing, for standing of system. We, institutions should come forward and commit themselves to implement the program in the field. We should also commit that to train people. Very large number of people we need to be trained. Not only the technician, but also those people. Regulatory system and data collection, which has to be, everybody should take responsibility and do it. And research institutions take research projects which are, are actually practical in nature, they solve the practical problem. See, we must integrate. So we do a lot of field work, so much of data, and then research institutions are sitting and watching it and not using this data for doing research and coming with something solution. It's a, it's a waste 
So he said, yes, we should, should come forward and make use of this available thing. So can you can choose an asset. We have a good now infrastructure for genetic improvement program. We have been supplying now uh, goods for civil production. We have to sustain this program. AI delivery system should be, AI should be increasing about 35%. Uh, we should raise it to 760 percent uh, There are great challenges in improving availability of feed and water resources and also recent balancing. Because people, we all experience a simple thing of recent balancing would make a lot of issues. Uh, health health need to be standard and control programs should be implemented uh, and other important basic aspects taken care knowledge and skill of farmers and people involved in the regulatory system should be replaced in all the uh, Thank you. Dr. Trivedi uh, for your nice uh, presentation uh, with full of information and uh, new ideas you have given. Uh, you rightly mentioned uh, that the three strategies for enhancing the productivity and I, I appreciate that uh, we need uh, how uh, to increase the productivity if we really want the sustained growth in the livestock sector. Three pillars, breeding, feeding and animal health. They are the three Pillars and at the same time also agile system, like yes. information and yes. data collection, yes. regulatory system. Correct. If you don't put this, then this would be a little shaky. Yeah. So these three three pillars, and uh, we are happy that uh, the government has also realized the importance of the livestock sector, and that's why the separate ministry has been created. And uh, can say animal sciences. Is really a Maratkar because you mentioned that we really need for increasing the productivity. Productivity. Infrastructure development is must. And if you look the website of the uh, Aswandi Department, Central Government, you will see a lot of funds are being given. So without infrastructure development, in breeding, genetics, a lot of work is going on new technologies now the IVF now people are people are very much aware seem and every farmer are, are talking but still I feel that uh, there is a uh, lack of awareness among the farmers uh, you don't talk about the uh, uh, semi urban areas or peri urban areas but if you go to the remote areas what you said in that really awareness program has to be taken up that's why we mentioned that the extension in the veterinary science is very much important uh, and uh, another thing is that the uh, we know that we are number one in the milk production in the world and not for one year but for the last uh, one decade uh, we are number one we have the largest number of the livestock also so now we have to understand that the productivity cannot be increased by increasing the land the number of the livestock so that is the main uh, uh, message you gave uh, in your uh, in your presentation so with this, uh, I invite uh, uh, two questions from this side and two questions from this side. <laughs> Any query? Because we have to go for another uh, uh, program. But it's only available for few breeds like gear and uh, in indigenous and buffaloes, not for all breeds. That's what I want to do. Yeah. So right, right now, uh, right now we have we are supplying genomic information for HF prospect, Jersey prospect, Vesala uh, buffalo, Mura buffaloes, and gear. And Saiwal we will send it very soon. These are the right now we are suffering. See, for genomic is not that genomic you take a blood sample and then you get the information. See, you have to have a reference population. Yeah, reference. reference population implies that you have a very really large number of animals under recording. And then large number same animals have to have genotype. And that genotyping information is to be done. Not in hundred, it has to be in thousands. So that takes little time. So moment we cross this 5,000 number of animal under recording and genotyping for a given breed, we start genotyping. Genomic breeding okay. virus. Okay, thank you. And uh, yeah, please. Uh, very good lecture, also. Very good information you have shared. And uh, the advancement, the breeding, and the genetics, and the health side of the uh, animal production. But my question is very simple: that purity of the breeds. Because we are maintaining the genetic pool, and especially murra, there is lots of question about the purity of the murra breed. So, how many animals we have with the pure purity of the 
this. You don't tell me about how many we have a pure, but I will give you instrument to say that it's a pure or not. That is available now. What is that instrument? Is that we do, first of all, assuming that these are pure by the scientist, that this is pure Mura by the scientist. And then we genotype this animal. And then you have SMP information, very large SMP information. And then we have come up with that what is the uh, uh, SMPs which decides the breed of Mura, Kee, Saiva, Rapa. We are done for all the breeds with very large animal. That means I, any animal is available. I take a sample, do genotyping, and I can tell you how much is pure. That means how much is not pure other. I would say that in an animal by Gujarat, we have been doing it. I would say that many animals, if it is in Saurash region, you find 10 20 percent cockroach thing. And if you go to the cockroach area, you find 10 20 percent of gay thing. So, but when you say what is pure, if it's 100 percent is a particular breed, you say pure. Otherwise, say, but we'll have to take a decision that 10 15 percent of any other breed is okay and can be said as a But still, we have question marks about the purity. Sir, thank you very much for such a elaborate information. Uh, in our army, we have noticed that uh, when we take the higher classes to high altitude areas in defense uh, sector, there the production reaches to a level beyond that it cannot because of the uh, less oxygen in high altitude. I will support his point that environment is a very important factor to achieve a genetic potential to some extent. So there should be some regional targets for a particular breed that may be considered. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you, uh, audience, uh, for your cooperation uh, in this session. Very nice information, Dr. Travedi, and thanks to the Chair, uh, Dr. Tripathi, uh, for in concluding remarks. Uh, thank you very much. And I would also like to thank our respected Chairs, Dr. B. N. Tripathi and Dr. K. M. L. Patan for chairing the session. Thank you, sir.